Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw, and I recently got a comment about what equipment, what do I need if I'm a beginner cake maker slash baker? And I thought that was such a great question because back when I was first starting out, I honestly felt a little lost until I actually went to school for baking. And I'm just gonna show you what I use, what are my essentials for when it comes to cake decorating and cake making from home. What happened to my voice there? <laughs> So before I start, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to ring the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. And yeah, so let's get started. Basically, what you're going to need to make a cake at home is going to be some mixing bowls. I suggest you get a lot of different sizes just because, you know, you need the appropriate mixing bowl for the appropriate thing. <laughs> course you're gonna need some spatulas I actually really like these ones from Betty, Betty Crocker because they are fully covered in silicone there's no nooks and crannies that can trap some dirt in there so it's pretty hygienic it's pretty easy to clean and then you're also going to need some cake pans I've got an 8 inch here I also have a 6 inch and then I have a 5 inch so if you're first starting out with learning how to make cakes and how to decorate I would highly recommend that you get a smaller pan and start your way from like a smaller cake and work your way up until you're more comfortable so that you're not you know wasting too much cake or making a huge amount of cake that might turn out bad. <laughs> Another thing I'm gonna recommend is a weight scale. Oh. I'm gonna recommend this weight scale because when I first started out, I was doing every single recipe possible in cups and teaspoons or tablespoons. And while it's not completely wrong, it's just that you want a more consistent product. And if you want a consistent product, then you're gonna want to have consistent measures so I used to work at a cupcake store and we used to just use cups and you know it works if you know what you're doing but if you're starting to train someone new and maybe they're a little more heavy-handed than you your one cup of flour versus their cup of flour will be completely different so that is why I recommend using a scale it just makes everything more precise but of course if you're completely oh my god one second technical difficulties it's not broken but of course if you're only comfortable with cups i totally understand it'll be fine as long as you're the one who makes everything and all your products will be consistent so another thing i'm going to recommend is a sugar thermometer just because i make a lot of italian meringue buttercream and if you don't know what that is it's a buttercream that's made with a meringue and this meringue is made with egg whites and a hot sugar syrup and to make this hot sugar syrup you want to get your temperature to a right temperature and the only way by really knowing if you've got it there is by taking a sugar thermometer of course another thing would be a stand mixer and i know they're a little pricey i would say it's great I found that it was very convenient, but if you don't have enough money to kind of shell out for a stand mixer, a handy hand mixer will do. <laughs> and this is what I was using all throughout the first few years of my life up until I maybe hit high school. And then from there, I was just kind of sold on my stand mixer. So, you know, make sure you're really into baking before you invest, of course, but if you do want to get a stand mixer, I recommend. So yeah, that's everything for the basics of cake making. We're gonna get into cake decorating. And this is what you're gonna need. I used to buy cake boards one by one at my local bulk barn. However, there are some cake specialty stores that sell these packs of cake boards. And if you know what size you want and you're consistently using like one size, it would be great and you would save some money by just buying a pack so once your cake is baked it's cooled it's sitting on a cooling rack that's another thing a cooling rack very helpful for any kind of baked good so once your cake is just chilling it's on your cooling rack you're gonna need to cut it and just kind of trim it with a bread knife or a serrated knife and this has come in so handy not when just cutting bread but also when you're just going to trim your cakes because when i first started making cakes i would use one of those little wire cutters that you like set to a certain height and then you kind of wiggle through the cake until it's cut through while that does work i find that it's a lot easier and faster to use a serrated knife kind of just really work on your 
cutting skills and a good way to make sure that your cake is level and cut through is if you just hold your knife at a certain level and don't move the knife as much as possible. You wanna turn your cake. So just kind of holding this, going back and forth at the same level, turning your cake at the same time, and then slowly moving in towards the center so that the full cake is completely cut through and straight. But if you wanna to stick to the wire cutters, feel free to do so. If that's what you're comfortable with, don't change anything. So another thing that I use a lot are offset spatula knives and they're just so important when it comes to cake decorating. Mostly because when I learned how to mask cakes, I was using this baby a lot. However, I found that this special was a little bit too big for me. So I find that I actually use this one a lot more. It's by Winco. It's the number 249. If I'm working with cakes sizes 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch and up, like I will use this one, but if I'm using for like a six, five, whatever, I will use this one because I get a little bit more control with this. And then when it comes to masking the sides, you see a lot of people using cake smoothers. So I decided that I would give this one a try. This one is by Wilton and it is the cake smoother. I don't like the fact that these corners are rounded because when you're smoothing the cake, you get a weird rounded edge at the bottom. Although I do use it all the time. When I first, started masking cakes before I bought this. I was actually using just like a plastic ruler like this. However, it gets a little hard to hold because it's so narrow. So if you can find something that's a mix of this and this, you will be set. So now let's move on to decorating. So when it comes to cake decorating, the very, very basics that I learned was using a piping bag and some piping tips and really learning how to control my piping and like having a steady hand and just knowing how to pipe. Disposable piping bags are great, but not so great for the environment. So I try to use my one handy dandy reusable piping bag as often as possible. I should invest in more, I really should, and I probably will soon because this one also has a little bit of wear and tear. <laughs> I find this one by Wilton was great. It, look for one that's got like a vinyl feel. I've used some horrible piping bags throughout the years, and honestly, this one is the best. It's the 16 inch one. It's great for lots of piping or, you know, detail piping, super versatile. Also, for my piping tips, I started out with just like this set of star tips. It goes from zero to nine and it's by Ateco. Then I also have the plain tips, which also go from zero to nine and they're just plain tips, but uh, I got them in college. So as you can see, people steal and I lost a few plain tips, but you know what? It's fine, it's all good. And then another thing that came in my kit was a Ateco 126, which is the flower tip or the rose tip. But if you wanna learn how to do roses, then you're definitely gonna need an, a flower nail. And this one is also by Ateco, it's the 907. And it just kind of helps because when you're piping the flower, you can easily turn it in your hand with the parchment between. I have a whole video on how to pipe some simple buttercream flowers. If you wanna check that out, I'll link it up or below. Then these three tips I bought on my own, I find that they were super helpful for just cake decorating. One is a leaf tip, which you can actually create by yourself by taking your disposable piping bag and then cutting a V shape into it. Then I've got the a, a Wilton 6B French tip. And I think just the French tip is just so beautiful, so elegant. And this was one of my first few tips that I bought for myself. It was the Wilton 1B, and I just think it's great for rosettes and things like that, especially for cupcake decorating. Those are kind of like my basics, and then from there, you can kind of go on and add as many crazy ones as you like. When it comes to coloring your buttercream, you wanna make sure that you're using a good quality food coloring. I like these ones by Wilton. They're the gel colors. The reason I like to use gel colors is because it's not as liquidy as the liquid ones, so it comes with a little bit more color concentration. If you wanna get into a little bit of painting on your cakes, like I do, I have a few tutorials. Um, I always go back and forth between my smaller offset spatula and my pointed offset spatula, which actually came in my gum paste tools kit. Um, not that you have to buy this whole kit. Okay. You know what, let's just get into it. Let's get into it right now. If you wanna get into the world of fondant and gum paste and gum paste flowers and all that, I would highly recommend investing in a little kit like this, although it's not necessary if you're not gonna get into gum paste. But this kit, let me open it up for you. This kit comes with really handy tools like a ball tool for when you wanna really thin out the edges of your 
petals and you know just some like textured stuff if you're also going to get into the world of gum paste tools for gum paste flowers i would recommend a shaping foam this one's by wilton i just use it to kind of thin out the edges of my flowers onto this foam and it gives it a soft surface to kind of really be spread out thin and if you want to get into fondant covered cakes i would recommend getting two of these clear Boom. these uh, little smoother tools that's always what i think about when i see them it's just a really nice flat surface easy to hold really helps to make your cake smooth and sharp edges and all that good stuff don't forget a sharp paring knife i find that this is just super helpful you never know when you'll need one but you'll need one especially when it comes to cutting fondant stuff like that fine details those are pretty much all oh forgetting something very important super important if you're gonna do some cake decorating you need a turntable for sure and when i first started out i actually bought a really cheap one i think it was Actually, I'm not gonna say any brand names, but it was a cheap one and you can tell because it was all plastic and very low level, but when it turned, it would turn like because it wouldn't turn very smooth. So while I'm masking my cakes, my cakes like my hands like as soon as I really took the time to invest in this baby, I found that my cake game was so much stronger. So yes, this is probably the most expensive thing I'm going to suggest. This was about $80, I think. I will have the brand name as soon as I figure it out. But yeah, get a smooth turntable. It's usually the ones that have like a metal top, a really heavy um, like rubber bottom base. And yeah, it just, it turns so beautifully and it just makes everything easier. So those are pretty much all of my cake baking essentials. I hope this really helped you out. And let me know if it did, leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do baking videos pretty much every week. I'm coming up with some cake wedding, some wedding cake decorations and some designs and some planning. And then I'm also coming up with some like exciting cakes. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.